what the hell is Web 3.0? Keep hearing it and I've got no idea what it actually is and I'm disappointed by all the explanations I can find. Hey John boy, allow me to help. I don't like to disappoint anyone other than my parents. In the 90s, we had Web 1.0. Think Netscape, static websites, Saved by the Bell. The web's daddy, Tim Berners-Lee, said Web 1.0 was all about connecting people. It was an interactive space. Today, we have Web 2.0, where platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Google allow us to interact with the internet and even upload our content to sites we don't own. But there's a catch. Today's version of the internet is dominated by a few platforms and is very centralized. They basically control the internet and our data is in their hands. When we had the option of Web 2.0, most people stopped using Web 1.0 sites. They just don't mix. It would be like finding out an external hard drive and a floppy disk were having a relationship. And yes, we should all feel uncomfortable about the age difference. In the not so distant future, we'll have Web 3.0, the next evolution of the internet, with the biggest difference being that everything will be decentralized. It will be created by either building a better internet or creating a whole new internet on the blockchain. There would be no dominant middle players who own the internet. Power would be distributed to all of us. We would control our data and the things we create or post, we would own that section of the internet. That sounds cool, but practically, how would it work? So for musicians, for example, instead of relying on a streaming site like Spotify, there would be a platform or section of the internet that would be owned by all the musicians that would house all the music. You could set your own rates and get paid, most likely in cryptocurrencies if we're on the blockchain. But what about the gatekeepers? Well, there wouldn't really be any. So for filmmakers, Netflix and YouTube would still exist, but their gatekeeping power would shift and eventually disappear like every winner of American Idol. The key thing here to note is that we would own part of the internet. Part two, what's the idea behind Web 3.0? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What's wrong with what we have now? If you're fine with a handful of billionaires owning the platforms that you need to connect with your friends, families, or fuck buddies, then sure, you don't need to join us. Personally, I'd rather shit mm. into my own hand and clap loudly than stick with the current model. But you do you, boo. The ideology around Web 3.0 is about power specifically taking the power away from established monopolies like social media sites or banks and giving it back to the individual user. Web 3.0 advocates say the best way for this to happen is to put all the data on the blockchain because the blockchain is completely decentralized and nobody owns it. So there's no hidden knowledge and knowledge is power. So everyone has access to what's on the blockchain? Well, yeah. Web 3.0 is coming at a time when people in the real world feel powerless to control their data and feel trapped by big companies and surveillance capitalism. Someone should make a YouTube channel about this subject. It would do moderately well. Disenfranchised people's biggest problem across the board is moderation and regulation, something that has upset or frustrated almost everyone. It's like chlamydia. It doesn't have to have directly impacted you, but you can bet your ass it's directly impacted somebody you know or love. The first cryptocurrencies came out of the financial crash as they wanted a way to bypass the entire banking system instead of allowing banks to make massive bets with other people's money and then run off with the profit while real people suffered the consequences. When you put it like that, it sounds pretty good. But when you ask me to buy some cum rocket, you lose me. That way the government has no control over our money and everybody can do whatever they want instead of having governments and credit cards being able to take away control of what we can do and buy. I fucking told you. Put your Tim Four hat away, Barry. In Web 3.0, everything is tracked on a ledger from status updates to video uploads to buying things or even health records. All of them are tokens on the blockchain and each token has value. I don't want everyone knowing my health records. They wouldn't. And besides, nobody wants to know how much Lego you can stick up your bum. Is that never telling anyone ever again? You can encrypt or hide tokens on the blockchain so only your doctor and you can see them. Jesus, Barry, you really need to spend less time on 4chan. You're starting to sound like controlled opposition. So who's gonna make these tokens? Well, creating tokens takes energy and would be paid for in crypto. Earning crypto is done by verifying transactions on the blockchain. Whereas today, when earning money is done by YouTube serving adverts to people who've subscribed to my YouTube channel or liked my content, or by people signing up to my shiny Patreon, linked below. Basically, the blockchain would be a single source of truth for everything going on on the web, rather than today, where all our data is spread across multiple sites and it's often out of date. Part three, social media sites in Web 3.0. The big players pouring billions into Web 3.0 are the same ones who control Web 2.0. Coincidence? I think not. 
they want to own and corner off part of Web 3.0, which anyone can do because it's open to all, but they want you to believe that it's the only part of the internet that exists. If you want to learn more about how Facebook is trying to do this with the world of VR, you can watch this video now. It's also why Zuckerberg has renamed his hot or not clone to the metaverse. This great PR job means that a lot of people, admittedly mainly mums who sell on Facebook Marketplace, who just want access to the tools that Meta provides, will see it as the go-to place. In the same way, a lot of people think Facebook when they hear social media, or think Snapchat when they hear paedophiles. But why wouldn't we want Facebook and other social networks on Web 3.0? They're pro-free speech and pro-freedom for users, or at least that's what they keep telling us they are. Oh, Barry, do I detect a hint of sarcasm? Freedom of expression is one of our core values. YouTube's mission is to give everyone a voice. From our perspective, the primary focus is that every user has uh, paramount rights to free expression. If social media sites were as pro-free speech as they like to say they are, they would love Web 3.0. They would love the fact that everyone can post anything and have complete control over their context, but they don't. They're only free speech when it lets them not take responsibility for the content on their platform. This quote around free speech wing and the free speech party was never was never a mission of the company. It was never a, a descriptor of the company that we gave ourselves. It was a, it was a joke. Free speech was never on the table. They're ad companies. No matter how hard they try and spin it round like a record baby, right round, right round, like a record baby, right round. Advertising works best when you can control where people are looking so you can ensure an ad gets seen. It also works well when you have as much information as possible on them so you know what mood to get them in to buy something. But surely some parts will be centralized or who decides what gets changed? Okay, you got me. It's not perfect, and some things have been overlooked as insensitively as hosting a speed awareness course over Zoom. But in the developer's defense, it's only their third attempt. It took Louis Vega five mumbos to get his first hit song. This is why Twitter's founder Jack Dorsey tweeted, you don't own Web3, it's centralized under another name. Which is partly right, I guess. When decisions have to be made about the music streaming corner of Web3, the musicians who have the majority stake, based on their download numbers, would get a bigger say than those with less downloads. So there's elements of centralizations creeping back in, but the reason they have more downloads would be more democratic. For me, it doesn't matter that there's a little bit of a hangover of centralized power from Web 2.0. What matters to me is the shift in power and the removal of dominant established systems like banking, so that all of us have a system that we can use to share, create, and trade directly with whoever we want. When I was a kid, my parents saved up to give me access to the internet because it was the place where all the information was being housed. These days, parents are actively trying to keep their kids offline because their attention has become a commodity and there's far too much misinformation. Web 3.0 allows everyone to take control of their data, take accountability for their actions, and have more one-to-one -one relationships with everyone they want to interact with. But what do you think? Are you for or against Web 3.0? Do you think it's a nice idea but practically impossible? This isn't just a video, it's a conversation. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.